I know this Christmas has been a little rocky, even for the Simpsons, but I think these gifts born of thought and love will restore the balance of Prama and Samsara. I mean Holly and Jolly. If you're anything like me, you probably have a fairly large family, which can sometimes make Christmas gift giving a challenge. There are just so many questions. Am I expected to get everyone a gift? What kinds of gifts would people I only see a handful of times a year actually like? And how much is that going to cost? Well, this covers all of that. This is the White Elephant Gift Exchange, and it's about to solve all of your holiday gift giving problems. The legend of the white elephant traces all the way back to ancient Siam, or modern day Thailand, where in the predominantly Buddhist culture, pure white albino elephants were thought to be sacred. They were so valuable in fact, that whenever one was discovered, it immediately became the property of the king. The only problem however, is that much like some gifts you may be receiving this Christmas, white elephants were pretty much useless. Due to their sacred nature, they weren't allowed to work as normal elephants would, and top of that required expensive food and special housing apart from other animals. These elephants were living the life, but someone was picking up the tab, and that someone was the king. So as the story goes, the king would give his white elephants away to anyone who displeased him, which at first glance may not seem that bad. Most kings would have your head off for displeasing him, and this king gives you a present for it? However, this could be much, much worse. The recipient of the white elephant would be forced to spend a fortune taking care of it properly, and since it was a gift from the king, they weren't exactly able to get rid of it so oftentimes it would slowly ruin them financially. Despite its sacredness, the white elephant was considered a burdensome possession, much like the gifts found in white elephant exchanges done today. Though this story may be entertaining, its validity is questionable at best. Owning an albino elephant like the one in the story was actually seen as a great honor in CM, so it's highly unlikely the one would be given out as some kind of passive aggressive punishment. However, there's another story I'd like to share with you that does have some validity, and that's the story of P.T. Barnum's Tongue to Long. In 1855, showman P.T. Barnum introduced a new act to his circus, which he advertised as a white elephant, going by the name of Tung Talong, which roughly translated to Gem of the Sky. Barnum spent nearly $40,000, one half million in today's money on the elephant, with high hopes of it becoming a worldwide success. While the elephant wasn't completely white, it did have a large lighter spot, which made it rather unusual. He doubted the crowd would care. White elephant, normal elephant with a white spot, what's the difference? The pair traveled from Burma to England for the big premiere at the Zoological Gardens in London, where unfortunately, the audience was far from impressed. They didn't fall for the white elephant, that in reality wasn't much different than a typical African elephant. So knowing Barnum, he spared no expense, shipping Tung Talong all the way to the US for another shot at glory. Just like in England, the American audience also wasn't interested. The attraction was a complete disaster, and in the end, Tung Talong the White Elephant became nothing more than a burdensome possession, costing P.T. Barnum a small fortune. Sound familiar? Now that we know the origins of the White Elephant, let's think of some gift ideas in the same spirit of that. The best thing about these gifts is that every exchange can do them differently. Specification for the types of gifts will usually be decided by the organizer of the event. They'll usually state whether or not the gifts can be new, a minimum maximum cost, and other vital information. In my family, the gifts are encouraged to either be something laying around the house or costing a very small amount of money, between five and ten dollars. We've had all sorts of gifts, from ugly dishes, to a keyboard vacuum, to gag gift boxes, to an old boxing toy. Still mad I didn't steal that one. Gifts can range from completely ridiculous to actually pretty good. A couple years ago, I got this cool miniature fountain. Okay, it is kind of useless, but that's the point. Your gifts don't have to be amazing, expensive, or meant for anyone in particular. Honestly, even the most random piece of junk thing you can find in your house will probably make a decent gift. As so many say this time of year, it really is the thought that counts. So we've talked a lot about the origins of the white elephant and some examples of gifts, but now I'd like to get into the rules of the game itself. Just like the gifts, they can vary depending on the organizer, but the most standard rules go as follows. Each participant must contribute a single gift. This gift must be wrapped so its contents are not revealed. Most of the fun of the game is not knowing exactly what you're gonna get, so make sure you follow this one. A gift bag also works fine for the work smarter people in the group. Next, participants will draw the hat or other object, preferably in the holiday spirit but not required, to determine the order. 
Next, participants should sit in order, forming a circle around the presence, with the last person being the either side of the first, depending on rotation. Let's get to the fun stuff. Player number one will start by choosing one gift from the pile, which they will open and reveal to all players. You got me weed. From then on, following players can either choose a wrap gift from the pile or steal an unwrapped gift from another player. If that player chooses to steal, then whoever gets stolen from has the same two options. However, if three swaps occur, then the turn comes to an end. A person picking a new gift automatically ends the turn. After all players have had a turn and all the presents are open, the first player gets the chance to swap the gift they're holding for any gift. Per usual, anyone whose gift is stolen in that turn may steal from someone else. But when someone refuses to steal, the game comes to an end. For the last turn, the three swap rule isn't applied, so technically the game could go on forever, which can get kinda crazy. I did a white elephant at my church last year, where the final turn legitimately lasted for over 30 minutes because there was one gift that no one wanted. Eventually we did a countdown, and I became the new owner of this thing, a kid sized Fortnite hat with matching gloves. No matter what you win or don't win, white elephant gift exchanges, to me at least, are one of the most fun things about the holiday season. With each passing year, getting a bunch of material things for Christmas becomes less and less exciting, and spending time with friends and family becomes more important. Not to tie some overreaching world of this video, but I found recently that what humans really want aren't material things at all, there's distractions from it. And I think that the white elephant gift exchange is a good example of that. I feel like nowadays I'm just as excited about some piece of junk gag gift as I am about some expensive gift. Or at least I try to be. If you're getting together with people this holiday season, I'd encourage you to try a white elephant gift exchange for yourself. And don't worry about the gift, it's the thought that counts.